preach this vast host of people and uh, knowing that about 300 of them or more were just itching to get rid of me. And so that's not the most calming, quiet, peaceful thing in the world to be looking out there because you couldn't respond that way. And I had to walk out there like I loved every one of them. The truth is I didn't. Just to be honest, I didn't. And so I remember being in the prayer room one day and I was really battling it out with God. In fact, I, one or two times I told him, I said, God, I don't even want to be there, Pastor. And so I had to go through all this and one day God settled this issue with me. He said, if you want to win this battle, two things he taught me. This is the first one. If you want to win this battle, you must fight this battle on your knees alone with me, period. You cannot defend yourself. You cannot argue. You cannot do any of that. This battle, you must fight on your knees in this prayer room alone between the two of us. Well, I didn't think that was very hard till I started doing that. And then I realized he meant what he said. Couldn't argue, couldn't defend myself. No matter what they said, I had to fight it out. So what I want to share with you is what I know to be true. Not what I've read, what I've heard, because I've never read it. I know that you can win every battle, no matter what it is. And it may sound impossible, but I want you to listen carefully. Got lots of notes on the Mac screens today because I want you to get the point. You and I are going to fight battles all of our life till the day we die, and maybe on that day. And the issue is, do you want to win or do you want to lose? Do you want to fight them in vain, uselessly, or do you want all of this fighting that goes on to be profitable to you, profitable to the kingdom of God, to bring Him glory and honor? And I think surely you must. So why should we fight our battles on our knees? Well, let's just begin by simply saying this that when you think about whatever battle you're going through, it doesn't make any difference what it is. Whatever your battle you're going through, whatever you're facing, it, it could be some, some, strong, some very difficult thing in your life that maybe you're saying that I'm at the point right now that I don't know whether I'm going to make it or not. I want to tell you how to win every time. And the first thing that's necessary is this is to remember this is a biblical pattern. This is not my pattern. This is a biblical pattern. You go back in the Old Testament, there are many men on their knees praying. Hezekiah, for example, before an attack. Daniel, for example, when the king Darius told him that he wanted him to be the head over all of the kingdom. And the other satraps uh, were uh, jealous and so uh, they plotted uh, to have him thrown into the lion's den, and he, he knew about that. And what did he do? He went up on his rooftop, opened the window, and prayed like he normally had. And, of course, they threw him in the lion's den. But what the guys were, did not know who plotted was that when Daniel was in the lion's den, God would be in there with him. And, of course, you and I know what happened. Look at the life of Jesus. He had to battle sometimes. We just see that one in the Garden of Gethsemane. There were other times when Satan attacked him. There'll be times when you and I get attacked. All through the scriptures, you find God's servants battling out the issues on their knees before God. So it's a pattern, very important pattern. The second reason we should do it is this, and listen carefully. And that is when you and I humble ourselves before Almighty God, reverencing who He is, which is very, very important. When we kneel before Him on our face before Him, crying out to Him, here's what we're doing. We engage the sovereign of the universe. We're engaging God. We're bringing Him into our battle so that we're not battling alone. And so who is that? We know that He's absolutely omnipotent. He has all power. Absolutely omniscient. He has all knowledge. He is omnipresent so that I know He's with me in the battle. And if you think about this, no matter what you're facing, you have engaged, you have brought into your battle the one person who knows all the facts, who knows all the ins and outs, who knows exactly what you should do and what you should not do, and the person who has the power to execute his will and his purpose and his plan in your life no matter what. 
And so for a person to fight their battles without God, what you're doing is you're eliminating the most powerful force in the world because the scripture says that he says he has established his throne in the heavens and his sovereignty, his awesome power rules over everything. He says, for example, they that wait upon the Lord, he says, here's the promise. He says he acts in behalf of those who wait for him. And oftentimes in our battles, we have to wait for God to give us direction. It's time on your knees before him. And the reason God doesn't give us a quick answer oftentimes is for this reason. We don't even understand what the issues are sometimes. We think we do. So what he has to do, he has to just pull off layer after layer after layer after layer of our attitudes, for example, and our viewpoint about things till he gets down to the truth and he shows us the truth. If we're to fight our battles, we're to fight them God's way. We're to fight them on our knees, recognizing that we have this awesome God who is willing to get engaged in our fight, no matter what it is, and he's willing to see us through it. Now, there's a third thing and a third reason why we fight our battles on our knees, and that's this. And that is God sent the Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit, for example, because, several reasons, but one of them, he, remember he told his disciples, he said, he said, you sit down, that's what he said, terribly, you sit down in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high when the Holy Spirit comes. They were not ready to face the battle they were going to face to go out and win the world to Christ, that is to evangelize the world. They weren't ready. And he said, you're not ready just because you've been with me for three years and watched miracles and teaching and all the rest. You're not ready until you be endued with power from on high. And so the Spirit of God came. When you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, He came into your life. Listen, to do what? To indwell you, seal you as a child of God, and begin His awesome work in your life. So what is His work? If you read the Scriptures, what you'll discover is this, that every single work of the Holy Spirit is something that He does, you and I cannot do for ourselves. And one of His works is to give you and me God's viewpoint, God's viewpoint of the battle we're going through, to see things the way He sees them. He also gives us not only His viewpoint, but He gives us discernment to be able to know what to do, when to do it, when to speak, and when to be quiet. And it's very important that whatever battle you're in, that you and I understand when we ought to do the talking and uh, when we should not do the talking. Sometimes the way you fight is with silence. It is powerful. Now, I don't mean being cowardly, but I mean silence is powerful. He says he acts in behalf of those who wait for him. You don't get up and move. You don't make a move. You just wait for God. Silence is oftentimes very powerful. And so he sent the Holy Spirit to tell us when to speak and to tell us when not to speak. Tell us what to say and what not to say and to who to say it to and, and to whom we should not speak. And so in order to fight our battles on our knees and to win, there are certain things that are very important. And I think about also uh, what happens when you and I fight our battles on our knees. That is, we're, t we're talking about simply talking to God about the situation. One of the most awesome things is this, and all of us have been through this, you, you get the greatest amount of comfort and assurance and confidence when you have spent time alone with God, and He's speaking to you and encouraging your heart. Let me ask you, how many times have you ever prayed and God just totally discouraged you? That's not who He is. What does He do? He encourages us. He lifts us. He gives us his viewpoint. He wants us to see things from his perspective. He wants us to he wants us to know from his perspective what to do next. And so when I think about the fact that he's so willing to be so intimately involved in my battles, no matter what they are, you and I can win every battle every single time. Now another reason is this. We get we get our clearest view of what's going on on our face before him. That is, we're able to see things. You're going to be able to see things and hear things in prayer. You're not going to hear any other way. You say, well, now, God can speak any way he wants to. Yes, he can. But he also makes choices. And he makes choices, listen, he makes choices to speak to those who are listening and those who are willing to take time to listen and hear his voice. So therefore, I can get a different perspective on things because I'm going to see them from his viewpoint. And 